It's Kathleen from Old World Farmhouse. I have done a lot of videos about living room layouts and space planning and recently I did one thing in my living room that completely changed the way I see the room and I can't believe I never thought of it before in all the years I lived here. So I want to share it with you. Let's get into it. This is my living room layout as it was most recently. So here's the center of it. It if you make an X on this kind of drawing, it shows you where the center of your room is. This is a scale. So I did this one a while ago, but I think that it's one square of the scrap paper is a foot. So there's the center right there with my sofa and coffee table. And then I've got two chairs on the other side of the coffee table. And then I've got this other seating back there, a settee and another chair. And then here are how all the footpaths around the room. So this was like as best as I could figure how to make it for a party that we recently had. And it worked reasonably well. There was plenty of places to seat, to seat, to sit. As you can see, I've got the sofa and then one, two chairs and then one, two, three chairs and a settee kind of up against the wall and that floated out into the middle of the room. Laurel Byrne from the blog Laurel Home, she is a wonderful interior decorator who has this hilarious blog. I, I love it so much and she has some great posts on there about space planning and I was looking at some of her diagrams recently, re-looking at them and planning out my living room again. I've used her diagrams before to help me and I decided to try an arrangement I've never tried before because I've always been going with the rule that when you walk into a room, people's backs shouldn't be to you. Well, this room has two doors. Let's, let's take a walk. Here's what the room looks like from a bird's eye view. I turned the sofa around to, so its back is to the main entrance into the room. And then I put a chair on either side of the fireplace for the main seating grouping. And then there's the settee on one side and a chair on the other. And so there, it, um, it makes for a more horizontal emphasis for this room. And there's still plenty of space to walk around. There's at least two feet in between all of these seating um, arrangements. And it has made the room feel really different. Let me show you. My living room has two doors. So when you walk in, I'm, I'm standing right up against the one door. I've always, always avoided putting my sofa with its back to the room. I can see now that this is crooked. And recently I was thinking, well, maybe my sofa is the problem. Maybe it's too long for this room. And I decided that I was gonna to try to move this settee and these chairs into a grouping closer to the fireplace. And while I was in the process of shoving furniture around, the couch ended up here. And I liked it. And I thought, well, I feel like I'm breaking this rule about walking in and having your back to things. But as soon as it was here, the shape of the room flowed so much better. And I looked at one of Laurel Burns, um, like seven typical living room layouts or something. And this was one of them actually to have like a couch, a chair, a chair, another chair. And then in my case, I have a settee. So actually now this seating grouping could be theoretically one, two, three, four, five, if someone was sitting on the ottoman and then six, seven, eight, nine, of course, four people never fit, never sit together on a four seater couch. So three people. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So nine to 10 people in this grouping, but I still haven't sacrificed having like a more private conversation area because I still have these chairs tucked in this corner. The rocking chair has to stay. It's a family heirloom and it's a very important um, sentimental piece for us. So I'm not quite sure, you know, it, it does look a little squashed there, but I do love having that conversation area. So we'll see, maybe I'll put a smaller table in the middle. I'm very pleased with how this has reoriented the room. And we recently had a party, not the party, the, not the big party where I was cramming as many chairs in as I possibly could, but a smaller little tiny birthday party for my daughter. And 
we had a fire and it was so cozy and it felt really good and it made the fireplace, I thought I was making the fireplace a focal point before when I had the couch this way, like where that flowered chair is right now. Sorry, this is crooked. Um, the couch was there and I thought that was, and then chairs on the other side, I thought that was making it a focal point. But having it this way, having it this way is, is really playing to the horizontal strengths of this room, which I didn't even realize it had, but it's sort of a rectangle. Um, you know, it's not, it's a rectangular room. So this way it just feels wider because everything is spaced out from side to side and the fireplace is pretty wide too. Uh, and it just, it feels, it feels really good. Years ago at our other house, we had a lovely neighbor from New Jersey and they had sold their home and moved out here. And I guess they'd had a, a beautiful historic home and they got quite a lot of money for it. It was one of those where they had bought it for nothing and, you know, raised their family and then it ended up being worth a lot. <laughs> and she said to me once, oh, it was all doors and windows. And I thought, well, how could that be a bad thing? But I kind of understand now because every room in my house, every time I turn around, there's a door or a window. So it's it's a challenge figuring out how to manage that, but I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this, and I did make sure that there was quite a lot, more than the minimum of two feet in between where the door starts and the couch begins, and I think that makes it feel better. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna open the door. Okay, so here I am out in the hall, and I'm gonna walk in. And you can see you're not immediately confronted with the couch you do have a bit of way and then you do have the minimum I didn't measure this but I'm sure it's at least two feet maybe 36 inches which is what Laurel Byrne recommends so you can walk in between here without feeling too terribly squished but then this way there's plenty of space to walk around the couch you don't really need a lot there's nothing back here but our firewood so that's okay um it's still got plenty of room if you do need to squeeze and then it's very easy to walk around this way there's plenty of room there's even room probably two feet at least to walk through those two chairs so I'm still really happy with the amount of seating that we can put in this room because that's something that's really important to us we love to have enough places for people to sit one thing I would would love to get a fireplace fender because if you get the kind with a padded top you can fit three or four people who can just sort of perch on it and i think that would be really cool while i was in this room i took some pictures of all the fabrics and i made a fabric mood board in canva i've talked in other videos about how a, a few things in this room desperately need recovering and i'm going to try to force myself to learn how to make slip covers which i've never done but of course that entails shopping for fabric first so i wanted to get pictures of everything i already have which is just all in there pretty much purely by accident and put it all together and just study it for a while and then go shopping I've been looking a lot at spoonflower.com for fabrics and looking at doing some duck canvas as well for slip covers. I'm not really sure, but, and I'm also needing to look for some covers for, um, or not covers, but fabric for curtains too. But this is a really easy thing to do if you wanna just look at your fabrics in your house and see how they work, is just take pictures of all of them and then crop them to a small size and you can, um, Open, you can have a free Canva account and just get those little pictures in there and um, work them up into a collage. It's actually really fun and I've just been staring at this and hopefully I will get inspiration. But I just wanted to show you here how it could work and you can drag the pictures around and make them as big or small as you want and they've got different functions so you can like layer them on top of each other and make one show um, or make one part of the background or whatever. So. It's really, really easy and intuitive to use. And before you know it, you can have your own custom swatch board and um, just stare at it as often as you want. <laughs> Come on, Diane, take a look at these swatches. It's a line from my favorite movie, Sleepless in Seattle. Um, some of you might recognize it. So I will link all of the things about living room layouts down below. And I am 
interested to hear what you think about living room layouts and my living room layout. So let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to all of your input and I will see you next week. Take care until then. Thank you.